It is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, as we were mentioning in the last segment of the show. And, of course, if you've joined us over the last few weeks, uh, this is not a mystery either. We've had a number of guests who've been coming into the studio discussing this. In fact, Arnie Walker from the, the Wellness Tree has been with us, gosh, I think it's three weeks now, right? Three weeks, yep. And uh, and so he's getting to be a regular. He doesn't uh, need to ask directions or anything like that. <laughs> Although I, when I took the job, believe me, the first week it was difficult because, you know, you're trying to find your way around town. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Robert Lobb is back with us, too, as well. Uh, you were here last week. Correct. And uh, so I was just pointing out to the uh, two of them that Dr. Jonathan Tripp was here earlier. We had a conversation about cancer in general, but really in the last oh, five minutes of the program or so, we had a good conversation about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. In fact, we had a caller who joined us. Uh, and he was he was trying to nail down the web. There's a website women can go to where they can find details about all of this. But we should point out that the wellness tree itself uh, is doing a lot of work. But we're also we're also seeking to have people who are in a charitable mood, perhaps contribute as well, uh, because the wellness tree, a dollar, it seems like uh, even ten dollars is going to serve perhaps hundreds of women before we're done. Yeah, because we have so many volunteer medical providers that give their time, each dollar that that is donated isn't paying for medical personnel to give care. It's paying for everything else that needs to happen to give the care to the patient. And so each dollar is multiplied many times over. Um, so we really appreciate the community support. We take no federal or state funding. We don't bill anyone. It's all community-based funding. So we so appreciate any support that you can give us. And I mentioned in the last hour of the show that if people go to our website, newsradio1310.com, uh, there's a ring around the website right now, which is pink and it has the ribbons as well. If you click there, there'll be information on how you can actually do that charitable donation. Uh, but I would imagine too as well that if, if people go check out the wellness tree, they can do the same thing. Yeah, we, you can donate online on our website as well. So, yep. We talked a little Basically. bit about overall cancer prevention in the last half hour with the other doctor. Uh, Dr. Lobb is going to be talking about prevention specifically with breast cancer this morning. And there's a couple of different points you wanted to bring up. Uh, one of them, we often talk about smoking, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about alcoholic beverages, do we? And that, that does play a role in all of this. Absolutely. Um, you know, lifestyle changes uh, that you can implement as a woman now can actually significantly drop your risk of developing breast cancer as you get older because we know this is a disease usually of older women uh, 50 and above but just as an example alcohol is one uh, the american cancer society suggests that no alcohol of course be imbibed but if it's going to be imbibed perhaps uh, no more than one drink per day Smoking, a lot of people are uh, becoming more and more aware, is not just a lung cancer issue. It has to do with cancer in the throat. It has to do with esophageal cancer, stomach cancer. It's amazing. Uh, bladder cancer is a huge one, but that breast cancer is also one of those. So in the lifestyle changing uh, thought process, the big lifestyle changes that we can make besides no smoking, no drinking, is getting your weight under control. And one of the aspects of getting your weight under control besides a healthy diet is uh, exercise. And that exercise can be moderate and you will, uh, you will gain all the benefits of uh, breast cancer prevention. And by moderate exercise, I'm talking about walking maybe 30 minutes a day, five days a week. And most people can fit that into their schedule. Well, out of all those things, I know people who have difficulty overeating, people who smoke and drink. Probably eating, though, is the easiest to control in the exercise, right? Because they're not, we're not talking an addiction like we are perhaps with alcohol or tobacco. Correct. And, uh, and if you know anything about weight loss, you do realize that it's a combination of a diet and exercise. But of those two, the most important is the diet. So if you look at a diet that's a healthy diet, that is one uh, that emphasizes white meats, fish, chicken, that kind of thing, and limits red meats, uh, emphasizes vegetables and fruits, uh, these are things that can change your, your weight because most people that are overweight are not eating a healthy diet. And oftentimes they do not know the difference between a carbohydrate, a protein, a fat, 
and how that relates to trying to prevent them from actually losing weight as opposed to uh, the right kind of diet, which will accentuate that. But if you combine an exercise program, and I'm not, you know, a lot of folks out there think maybe that, they, that they're a construction worker or they have a fairly physical job, and that should be enough uh, exercise to fulfill a moderate activity status, but it truly isn't. And the reason it isn't, it helps, but it, the reason it isn't is because it's a stop and go mm -hmm. exercise, okay? You're, you're a construction worker, you might be sweating like crazy for 10 minutes and then sitting on your butt for, you know, another 20 or 30 or whatever. So if you look at continuous exercise, which is the, the type we're talking about, and I'm not talking just about aerobic exercise. I gave the uh, example of the walking, which is fine. And everybody has to understand that it doesn't have to be that much. But if you really kind of get into it, what you need to do at least three times a week is do, week, do some strengthening exercise, which is the weightlifting portion, which you can do at home with, you know, jugs of milk or whatever if you don't want to invest in, uh, you know, uh, exercise weights that may cost a little more money than you got on hand. A lot of people buy those smaller uh, dumbbells. Yes. And I, I've been to friends' homes and seen those, and uh, just the, the use of those dumbbells. And then I had a relative, she used to strap the weights around her ankles when she would Correct. walk. Correct. And, uh, and that would also help out, too. Yes. Yeah. And in women, that's also one of the major preventers of osteoporosis which is a little off our topic, but there's a lot of benefits there, and uh, it's cardiovascular benefits, of course. But if you can get the weight down, controlled, get your BMI down below 25, uh, not so low that it's below where it should be, but at least below 25, uh, that's going to benefit you in, in, in preventing breast cancer down the road. Our guests, uh, Dr. Robert Lobb and Artie Walker, they're here on behalf of the Wellness Street today, and it's a Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we are doing a, a regular weekly segment uh, discussing some of these topics, especially uh, how to uh, go about prevention. 914 and 53, Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I think that we have a, somewhat of an advantage in southern Idaho, Nevada, Utah, that culturally and because of a lot of the, the religious faith of a lot of our population, you don't have drinking and smoking. I mean, people simply, they don't, or even caffeine, they don't imbibe in those things, which Correct. could all be factors. Yes, absolutely. And that's why Utah always seems to come out on top of uh, the list as far as healthy living is concerned. I, w I was going to say, for people who, who, do, who do have an issue, though, and, and I think I've met many people who would like to quit smoking. I mean, I know a lot of people who, I had a friend at work, she told me, took her 17 tries before she finally got it right, and she's been smoke-free for about 20 years. But... There's a, there's a, you, you've got to really, it's a long list of things in order to get to that prevention, you have to go through smoking cessation, or maybe even some people have to go to AA. I mean, there are a number of things they have to do before they even get to thinking about this overall. Support groups, and there are uh, several in Twin Falls that are available different times of the year, different classes, uh, where you go with other smokers and they go through a step-by-step -step way for you to get off cigarettes. Uh, you know, a, a misconception out there in public uh, about discontinuing smoking is that they can go to a low tar and, uh, type mm -hmm. of uh, cigarette or they can wean themselves off. And unfortunately, that doesn't happen. So the, the, the center of uh, cessation of, uh, with, with smoking is that you set a date and that date is your drop dead date and you do not use any form of nicotine other than perhaps the patches that you can buy at the pharmacy to aid in reducing the obsession that you have with wanting a cigarette and to try to substitute uh, a healthy activity when you suddenly have the urge to smoke so that uh, an example would be you wake up in the morning it's time for that cup of coffee and to light up the best thing to do, you might want to go ahead and take the coffee with you, but go out and walk around the block about three times. And then come back in, take a shower, get going with your day, and, and get through those periods of time where you are always rewarding yourself with a smoking experience. Instead, reward yourself with a healthy activity. Don't hang around with people, too, who are smoking. Absolutely. And, and if you're in a, a, you know living with someone who smokes also, and they're not at the same page you are, 
it's going to be extremely difficult to discontinue smoking. But if you can sit down and talk with them about making sure that they smoke outside, they don't smoke in the car, if you're sharing a, a, an automobile with them, uh, that they you know, try to limit the uh, experience where you're looking at them and they're sitting there smoking their fourth cigarette and it's 6.30 in the morning. I gave up cigarettes in sometime in the late 1990s. And what I did was I simply went cold turkey. I did those long walks when I thought I might want a cigarette. It was all over within a week for me. Physiology, I guess, is going to differ with people. Yes. But I made a commitment. I wouldn't go to the same diner. People were still smoking in diners. Stop going to the diner. Stop going to taverns. And to this day, don't go to them uh, because of that. Because I just, I, but I, I knew that if I was tempted, that I was going to have a serious problem if someone lit one up next to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, the other thing that some people may not be aware of is that there is medication now available that actually increases your chances of, of uh, staying off the cigarettes by about 30%, which is much, much better than any medication that we have had in the past. And uh, your doctor knows uh, what that medication is. It's prescription. It is expensive. In certain situations uh, where you have a smoking-related disease, you do not have any insurance, and you're going to the wellness tree clinic, we can get that medication for you uh, uh, from the far directly from the pharmaceutical company for nothing. Uh, so it's worth, I mean, if you've been sitting around at home thinking, my gosh, I've got to do something about this. My health is not going to improve if I keep doing this. I need to, you know, man up and do it then uh, go see your doctor, see if you are, are uh, able to take this medication, and uh, also maybe combine that with nicotine patches, nicotine gum, either one, uh, for at least a period of time, and, uh, and then do those lifestyle changes. Join a group in town. Oftentimes are associated with the churches. Uh, sometimes uh, we have, the, the public health department has them periodically, uh, we've had them at the Wellness Tree Clinic on occasion, uh, and so they're available, and oftentimes they're in the newspaper. So take we've, a look. We've got to wrap up on that note, but Arnie, quickly, uh, contact information again for the Wellness Tree. Yeah, the Wellness Tree, we're located. If you want to come by and check out the uh, clinic, we're in the old ER of the hospital. Um, our phone number is 734-2610, and you can check us out on the, our website, at wellnesstreeclinic.org. And make a contribution. And make a contribution. We'd so appreciate that. Arnie Walker and Dr. Lobb, I want to thank you both for coming by today. No problem. Thank you and, very uh, much. And we'll be seeing you all again. Coming up on 20 After 9, 53. Somebody needs to get his bifocals adjusted. Uh, we've got more coming up in just a few minutes, including a policy change at Twin Falls Schools.